In this video I'll talk about the basic types of visible imaging architectures. Uh, visible visible imaging. Visible imaging. And by visible imaging I mean the kinds of wavelengths that your eye can see. So I mean like blue, green, and red or thereabouts. Okay, of the general architectures there are two kinds. There's one, monolithic, monolithic, I'm just, I'll write them out and then explain them. And then two, hybridized, hybridized. What does monolithic mean? Monolithic means that you've manufactured the entire image sensor in a single piece of silicon. Single piece of silicon. Hybridized means you've used two kinds of material. Two uh, two materials. And you generally, in this case, will manufacture the photodiode in one material and the readout electronics in the other material and then you squish them together. Squish. Squish them together. That technique is usually called bump bonding. Bump bonding. And this is the hybridized for, sil uh, for silicon, for visible imaging. The general kind of uh, uh, photodiode structure is going to be the PIN structure, where you have a P-type, N-type, and then an intrinsic type in the middle that's a very large uh, volume. And th the reason you do this is so you can have a large depleted region. Depleted region. And you do that so you can uh, detect very long wavelengths, like maybe out to uh, 1,000 to 1,100 nanometers. But that's not what I'm going to discuss here. I'm going to focus on monolithic because this is generally what's used in most consumer applications and in quite a lot of uh, space-based applications and, and high-end applications, all kinds of applications. So within the monolithic uh, style, general type of architecture or general fabrication uh, style, so I, I would call the monolithic and hybridized fabrication styles. Fabrication Within monolithic, there are two kinds. There is CCD and CMOS. Let me scroll down. What is CCD? Well, CCD is, and I'm going to draw out the architecture later, charge coupled device. Charge coupled device. And CMOS is, oh, this is a big piece to write out, complementary, complementary, uh, to re metal oxide semiconductor. And, uh, it's a little bit of a misnomer because CCDs also have metal oxide semiconductors in them and also have complementary uh, PN structures, but this this CMOS generally gets referred to as a, as a kind of manufacturing process which would be distinct from the manufacturing process used to, manu to make CCDs. CCDs were the first kind of image sensor developed. I think they were developed uh, by Boyle and Smith at Bell Labs and I don't remember who first commercialized them but a long time ago they were developed. CMOS uh, image sensors are a later development, not much later, but later but they only became realizable uh, as mass-produced image sensors in the last 10, 15, maybe 20 years. And this is what you'll find in all cell phone cameras or any kind of consumer consumer electronics. Uh, there are reasons for that. The CCDs are still used in some applications, but CMOS drives the market now. Let me scroll down and get a new part of the screen. I'll start talking about the architectures. Okay, let me start with CCD, a CCD architecture. Architecture. Let me draw out an array of pixels. Here we go. I'm making an array of pixels like this. I'll divide it up. This is a big mass of silicon. I'm drawing pixels in here. Okay, so I have 4x4 four four array, so this is 16 pixels, where this would be pixel 1, this would be pixel 2, pixel 3, pixel 4, uh, 4, 
5, where pixel 5 is this whole area here, okay, and on down the line. Then below this array, I have what's known as a serial shift register, or a shift register, and that has the same number of pixels, but it just has one in this direction, just one pixel in this direction and lots of pixels in this direction. Okay, let me write that out. That's a serial shift register. Serial shift register. That's this whole thing. Let's say a photon comes in and hits that pixel and only that pixel and it creates an electron hole pair. As we know from the last video, the hole gets thrown away. We don't care about it. How does this electron come out of the CCD to the world that we can read and as a computer? The, wor the computers can only interact with digital quantities and this is uh, this is definitely an analog type quantity. In fact, it's not even really analog because it's just an electron. It's not even a, a voltage level yet, effectively. So how we do that is we need to, in the CMOS, uh, I'm sorry, CCD architectures, we need to get that electron out in, in a serial fashion. So we'll move the electron to this pixel. We'll, we're going to start shuttling the electron out. And then we move the electron to this pixel. Okay and then we move the electron to this pixel. Right? Now we move it into the serial shift register. It's now here. There's the electron. We move it over here and then we move it over one more time and then we move it out. Okay, and what do we move it out onto? Well the electron comes out here and it sits on a parallel plate capacitor or a capacitor and that capacitor is connected to an amplifier and this symbol I'm drawing now is an amplifier amplifier the electron sits on that capacitor and by this equation Q equals CV we know the value of C or let's assume we do we know the voltage that gets read out because it's the same voltage that comes out here and so we could extrapolate what is Q but that's how it gets related so this now is a voltage, but this is an analog voltage, and we need a digital voltage. What we do with that analog voltage is we send it into an analog to digital converter. Let me scroll down. An analog to digital converter, and then send that to a computer. And that's our signal. That, after all of those steps, after this, this, place, then this place, then this place, then this place, the electron shuttles out, and then finally we get to the computer. Okay, one thing I want to note before going on with the discussion is that in general for image sensors, the way you talk about the x and y directions here for the array is uh, this would be a row. So this would be row 4. Th these pixels would be row 3 and these pixels would be row 2 and so on and then you have columns let me draw it in a different color this would be a column that's column 4 this is column 3 and so on so you have rows and columns Okay. Alright, why would, why would we use a CCD? Why would we uh, use a CCD in place of a CMOS? Well, it has some virtues. Virtues. These are the ones I could think of off the top of my head. One is it's very low noise. You might not think it because you have to shuttle this electron so far, but at the end of the day, you only have one or a few amplifiers that you need to characterize and that is because you're sending almost all the charge through a single amplifier so that's very nice so that's one virtue and it's great for some applications especially space-based applications like TDI time delay and integrate because as the let me draw a picture so let's say this is the earth let's say you have a satellite that's orbiting the earth this way as a target is seen on the ground, if you can shuttle the charge along at the same speed that the satellite is passing over the target, 
then you can stare at the same spot for, for longer. Anyways, that's not for most consumer applications, but that is a, a nice feature for space-based applications. What about vices? There are things it's bad at. One is it's very high power. And this has to do with the fact that you have to charge and decharge a lot of clock lines over a large area to, to move the charge along. Uh, another vice is that it's slow because it's serial. We're trying to suck out the entire array through a single channel or a few channels, so it's like trying to empty a large cup by sucking through a, a small straw. Another vice is that it's non-standard in its fabrication, non-standard fab. And this is just a, a feature of the direction the semiconductor industry has taken. In most, in most of the semiconductor industry is, is CMOS in style for digital logic and whatnot, and so there, there are aspects of the CCD imager that do not fit well with CMOS architecture, even though it's all silicon and even though the physics is all the same, uh, it's just easier to, to manufacture CMOS imagers in current processes. In the next video, I'll talk about CMOS imagers.